are tuned in to 1700 and you are here with your host, Vic and Nick. Today, we're going to have a chat with a very, very special guest. With us here today is the powerful, soulful, and of course, the very, very talented Natalie Slade. How are you today? I'm really well. Thank you. And thank you so much for that beautiful intro. <laughs> of course. Well, thank you for joining us. And firstly, just wanted to welcome you here to 1700 Home and thank you for joining us today from your home. I know it's a bit different to the usual interview setting we will have, but how have you actually been finding this isolation period? A mixture of really good and maybe not so really good at times as well. Um, but even the not so great times are kind of good because um, I, I feel like maybe everybody has had a time to for a bit of reflection and a bit of um, confronting you know, a few issues, which is really important. You know, you can't, um, we can usually run away from things and distract ourselves a lot, you know? So I think it's good to have time to sort of sit with a few things as well. Absolutely. Look, welcome Natalie as well from me. Thank you so much for joining us today and taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, just on that note, do you find that obviously we're in this circumstance where we're in isolation and we're spending a lot of time at home? Have you found that it's been really pivotal in helping you to write music during this time? You know, you've got so much more time at home. Has it helped with your, your thinking and how you go about approaching to write music? Um, well, I think uh, definitely having more time to do it is really, really key because usually... I'm always out of the house. It's, you know, I, I, I have a job and friends and things. There's always so much happening. So it is, you know, as a writer, it's amazing to be able to have the time to just go, oh, you actually don't have to rush off to be anywhere. You can just carry on with that thought. Um, but otherwise, my writing process is exactly the same. Like, it hasn't really changed me other than like allowing me this time and space to do it. And then maybe because you get to think about some you know, some of your feelings, maybe, you know, maybe I'm delving into some different topics as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome as well. Really good that you're still creative and any, everything. And I saw as well that you've released two singles, Love Light and Give Me Your Love. Were these isolation written songs or was this before we went into this current period? Uh, these were written before. Um, this whole record was written before we went into ISO. Um, and it was when I was staying down in Melbourne for a while and writing with friends down there. Um, so yeah, separate to the, separate to the ISO stuff. Nat, I absolutely love your music. Um, I've been listening to it leading up to this interview and I've really loved the tones that you bring and the different styles that you bring. I think we could say that two of your strongest styles are this sense of soul and r and I absolutely love it. How have you found it to kind of bring those two styles together in a fusion and mix them together? Ooh. Um, I think it might organically happen because, you know, when you just listen to so many things, and in particular, I guess, like, when I think about what, would have been playing in my house, whatever songs my mother would have been playing. There was a lot of R&B and a lot of soul. And I, I, thankfully she loved that genre. Um, I suppose if she loved some other genre, I'd be saying, thankfully she loved heavy metal and I really love it now. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's, it's so, it really gets in deep into your person and your being and, you can then just, when you go to open your mouth to make things, you inevitably make things based on what you've learnt, you know, for the last however long. Yeah, and I'm a big R&B and soul fan myself. So just so our viewers and our listeners can get to know you a bit better, what type of songs were playing or artists that were playing when you were growing up that inspired you? Um, uh, I mean, a bit of a mix. But I like when I think about what would have been what my mom would have been playing would have been she loved stuff like Luther Vandross who I I, I totally love as well. Um, so there was lots of that kind of R&B in the house. And then as I started more about jazz, then I was getting records like I remember having this Blossom Deary record, which is I think I must have just stumbled upon it because I don't think many people even really know that much about Blossom Deary, but. Yeah, like finding these little old jazz records or, and having moments of, you know, mum playing R&B on the radio and stuff. Um, 
yeah, that would have that was hugely uh, influential for me. I think that's really lovely to kind of remember that experience of listening to that R and B music. Going on from that, Natalie, could you tell us a little bit more about your musical journey and how you know from that stage of just first hearing R and B music and now to where you are today? What was the experience like, and what was the journey like to get where you are today? Kind of long, <laughs> actually. I, I sort of feel like it took me ages to be able to articulate myself. I think I took in a lot of information for a long time and didn't really intend to do music. I mean, I wanted to do music, but I didn't know how to. And I, to be honest, I had started a business uh, and was not going to be writing songs and doing records. I was doing other stuff altogether. And it was only when, I don't know, life just pushed me in this direction after a while um, that it, I sort of found myself doing it rather than uh, intending to do it. So yeah, kind of maybe a windy path. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's such an honest answer. And it kind of seems like it was kind of your destiny in a way to end up doing music because you've always had this passion and you're finally doing it. And might I say you have such a beautiful voice and I really enjoyed listening to your music. And speaking of your one of your recent tracks, can you tell us a bit about Love Line? Yeah. Um, well, that was written when um, it was, I think, just before I was moving down to Melbourne for a little while. And... And the idea, I guess I was in a, in a, like a, a phase of a new chapter phase, you know, letting go of love and like finding it, but then letting go of it and loving the city and letting go of it. And so it's this interesting love song about loving, but not um, like holding on to what you, what really isn't yours to hold on to for that long, you know, and acknowledging that and kind of going, oh, this is really beautiful, but I know it's not mine to keep. So I have to accept that. Do you think it's really important to write about your own personal experiences in your music? We actually ask artists who come on 1700 this question quite a lot about, you know, speaking about the truth in their music. Do you find that that really drives how you go about to write music, this idea of writing about personal experiences and your own truth? Well, it does for me. I don't think everybody writes about themselves um, so much and I... I did think about that recently. I was like, gee, you write about yourself a lot. I mean, <laughs> what's going on there? Um, but I guess it's because I just, for me personally, I'm processing emotions or like whatever's happened, I actually, that's how I can process it internally. And then it just ends up being a song that I could share with other people. Um, but yeah, for me personally, I always just write about the stuff that I think and feel uh, kind of automatically. So it's like whoever comes into my life, they know you're going to have a song. So <laughs> like, you better be nice. <laughs> I love that. That's so good. And how do these people or even just your fans in general respond to the stories you tell and the honesty and all the words you share in your songs? Um, probably a bit mixed because I think, you know, some, Often we don't even really listen to the lyrics, like we just kind of feel the vibe of a song. So I think half the time people are just feeling a vibe and going, oh, that just feels nice and they enjoy that. And then other times people are listening to it and relating to it and, um, and saying things like, oh, I really felt that and X, Y, and Z happened to me and then I heard this and, you know, and sort of linking it in with their life because they've really heard and felt the lyrics. Mm. That's wonderful. Getting back to what's happening currently with your musical career, Natalie, obviously Vic spoke a little bit about Love Light, which was released recently and is the first official single of your forthcoming album. Um, she also mentioned Give Me Your Love, which is officially being released tomorrow on May the 22nd. Very, very exciting. And this is the second single from your forthcoming album. It's shaping up to be a really interesting album, really diverse, really powerful, really punchy. Can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek about what else is to come with the album? Yeah, you're right. The first two singles are pretty different, hey? Um, <laughs> it, it, and it, like, it crosses through genres and feels quite a lot, actually. Um, and that, that came about because we didn't have the intention of making an entire record. 
So it really was open to how do you feel today? Okay, we're writing that thing. And then it just, okay, it happens to be heavily influenced by drum and bass. Like we didn't expect that, but it happened. Um, so I think, I mean, that's the only tune, Give Me Love is the only one that's got like a drum and bass influence, but uh, one of the, there's this other tune, actually the title track of the album, uh, which is called Control, uh, and that's coming out in early June. That track is, um, I don't know, gee, I, I mean, I'm terrible with genres as well, but that's more like it's spoken word for starters, which is weird for me. And it's like, you could totally dance to it. It's, you know, it's like banger style, if, if you could do that. Um, but that's thoughtful and finding self. And then there's something else that's like, I, I did like a really romantic um, love song um for you know for this guy that i was dating at the time and and yeah it's 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 a blend a total blend yeah and you finding that now more than ever artists are kind of blending genres more there isn't really one defined genre of what an artist does it's very like experimental and there's not really one way to define your albums or your songs well i mean i hope so because my record is certainly jumping about a bit Hey, so, but then again, I don't know. I mean, if that's weird, so be it. But um, yeah, I guess, I mean, you can't help but be influenced by a whole lot more these days because we just have access to everything. And I kind of love a lot of different stuff. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely so, um, so prominent in what you've just said. There's so many different styles and genres today. Like genres are almost being made up every week. You just hear about all these new ones and you can't keep up almost because people are blending things, um, mixing things. And I think it's wonderful because it's really revolutionising the Australian music industry in particular. On that note, how have you found the support received from the Australian music industry on your musical journey? Uh, really good so far, actually. Um really good like across the board at the moment like particularly being like a complete unknown as well um and getting really nice reviews like the the songs that are up on um triple j unearthed i didn't actually expect because i thought maybe soul and r&b type music isn't normally what we do in australia so i wasn't sure what to expect at all i thought maybe either people will get it or they'll dismiss it or or whatever but they've actually written really lovely reviews and and had some really warm responses when we've sent it out to people yeah and on that note of the music you create how would you describe like the soul and r&b industry or scene in australia um thankfully i'd say it's growing which is really cool um and again, in a way that, because like how we just said, everyone's so influenced by everything, it's growing in a really interesting way of this, like people that have uh, soulful music, but influenced or in influenced by like, like using heavy guitars as well. Or, um, so in a really interesting way, um, which is maybe kind of cool that we're newer to it, um, because we can bring in all of this other information whilst picking up, you know, all of these cool other influences from like Soul and R&B. It's wonderful. Look, Natalie, you've got some amazing things going on at the moment. And what everyone's now dying to know is where can we find your music? Please take the time now to talk to us about your social media platforms as well as your music platforms, which is showcasing all this incredible work. Yeah, cool. Um, so, uh, like you said before, tomorrow we've got the, the second single coming out, which is Give Me Your Love. And if you hit up my Instagram page, which is underscore Natalie Slade, um, you can find all of the updates going there. Otherwise, I'm, uh, the record's coming out through Egglow Records, which is a UK-based uh, label. And they'll be having all of the songs up on their Egglow Bandcamp. So definitely tune into that. Also, because they have all of their other amazing artists and releases that you probably want to check out too. Um, and then uh, it'll be on all the platforms, but essentially, yeah, uh, hit up my Instagram and Eglo's uh, pages as well and you'll, you'll find some, some treats. <laughs> That's amazing. And my final question for you is, what is the first thing you're looking forward to doing music-wide when we come kind of back to our normal lives and you can perform again or 
go out and seeing what would you like to do first? Oh, all the options. Um, actually, if I can, then probably the first thing I'll want to do is try and get back in the studio with Simon Maven. He and I wrote this record together and we became such good friends through the process. Um, so I really miss him just as a friend and working with him is just like such an absolute dream. So if I can, then actually I'm going to be knocking on Simon's door. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's something that we're all looking forward to, going over to our friend's house, knocking on their door and, you know, seeing them in face to face for a first time in a long while. So can definitely relate to that feeling, Natalie. Look, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Natalie, it's been so amazing to hear about your musical journey as well as what the future looks like, which is looking very exciting. So thank you again for joining us. Thanks for having me. And that has been another interview here on 1700 with your hosts, Nick and Vic. We were just honoured to be joined in the studio just then, virtually in the studio, by Natalie Slade, who is an extraordinary Australian musical artist and doing some incredible things with her musical career. Make sure to check out our other pages as well. We're on Instagram and on YouTube. So if you want to see more of the 1700 family, that's the place to go. Until then, this is Vic and Nick signing out.